Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to dig into some features within Logic that could truly streamline your songwriting and production workflow. So instead of focusing on the menial tasks of tightening up performances or laying down the performance or trying to add humanity and variation to your performances, all this stuff is just a click or two away. So today we're going to focus on a MIDI production. And I already have an instance of Alchemy called up in my project. So there's a particular drum patch that I want to use within Alchemy that I just really love, and it's called Action Drums, okay? And it's pretty bombastic and cinematic, not applicable for most situations, but just take a listen. I just think that's so awesome, but I'm looking for a sound that's a little drier, a little tighter. So let's go to the performance pad here, drag this down. Okay, let's remove the delay and dredge down the reverb a bit. Okay, that works for me. So I have a drum idea that I wanna record and it goes something like this. The next step would be obviously to try to identify what the tempo is. So I'm gonna start with 180, see how that works for me. I'm pretty cool with that. So let's introduce it using shift R. We introduce the region that I laid down even while not recording. If I open the piano roll and let's just dig into what's going on here. So obviously my performance was far from perfect. Some stuff was pretty close with the grid, but you know, not perfect. So our next step would be to dig into quantizing this performance. So we would select all the notes in this particular region, and then we would navigate over to the time quantize section of the piano roll. So I'm gonna set this to an eighth note value and immediately all the notes are moved to the correct location in relation to the grid. So let's take a listen. Awesome, but what if Logic could just line everything up the moment that we record it so we don't have to go through this extra step? In fact, Logic can. So let's get rid of this region and I'm gonna lay down a new take of this drum performance. But before I do that, I'm gonna go over here to the region inspector, and I'm gonna select within the quantize section of the region inspector, eighth note value. So now when I hit record and I play my performance, as soon as I hit stop, Logic is going to move all of these hits around so they are tight with the grid on an eighth note grid value. Check it out. And check it out. So now when we go into the piano roll, everything is exactly where it needs to be on the grid. So fast, so easy, just immediately lay down and now we can move right on to the hi-hats. I have a hi-hat pattern that I wanna lay down on an eighth note value as well. And I don't wanna create a new alchemy track, right? I don't wanna duplicate this track and then lay down my hi-hat sound on a separate track. I want everything in the same track. So let's identify a hi-hat sound to begin with. Okay, that works for me. Now, before I move forward, I wanna go to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Recording. And we have a section here in the Recording Preferences called Overlapping Track Recordings. And basically, Logic wants to know when you're recording and it starts to overlap with an existing region, what should I do? I think we're all pretty familiar with take folders. You record an audio track, and then you lay down some more vocals, and Logic creates a folder for all the takes. Well, for the MIDI tracks, I want Logic to merge my hi-hat performance into the existing region right here. So I'm gonna set the cycle off and on to merge. And that's exactly what will happen. I'll lay down this hi-hat and it'll be baked into the existing region. One more step before I move forward, if I go to the toolbar and I select this option called note repeat, what's gonna happen is, is if I hold down any key when note repeat is available, it's going to repeat that note over and over until I let go at a specific rate. In this case, a 16th note rate. Great, so instead of me having to mash on the key over and over trying to get my timing right, I can go to eighth note. And that's perfect. So let's lay this down right now. Awesome, so now I'm gonna trim up my region here. Get rid of that. We can close note repeat, close the toolbar, open the piano roll. 
and wonderful. So I want to bring these hi-hats closer in terms of velocity. And you can see that the hi-hat velocity is exactly the same. Every hit. Makes sense. I held one key down. It's the exact same velocity. But, you know, we don't want our drums to sound static. We don't want it to sound just like a robot played them. We want to introduce some humanity. There's a very easy option to do exactly this. I'm going to select all the MIDI notes here. And then I'm going to navigate to Functions. MIDI transform, and then select the humanize feature. Now the MIDI transform window is amazing and there's so much to dig through in this window alone, but we're gonna just focus on humanize. And what humanize is gonna do is, is once I hit operate only, it's going to subtly, ever so subtly, adjust the position, the velocity, and the length of each note in this performance. So if I move this window and let me just select here and kind of zoom in so we can see what's going on. Here we go. So you can see some variations have occurred. And if I deselect this performance, you can see that the velocities are no longer identical. There's some variations. 102, 118, 112. So now we have something a little more human. Let's check it out. So now let's move on to a piano track. So I'm gonna introduce Alchemy again. I'm going to select a particular patch called Mellow Chimes. Let's check it out. That's pretty awesome. Let's add a little bit of delay for a little rhythmic action. So now I'm going to lay down some sustaining chords. And I'm going to purposefully stagger the chords. So it's like one note, second note, third note, kind of in sequence. And this is on purpose. I'm telling you this because we have to remind ourselves that the region inspector is still set to a quantized value of an eighth note. Even when I stagger the notes, the result is going to be a hard quantize selection. And oftentimes, even with the chords, they're probably all going to get lined up to the same bar. Let's check it out here. Okay, let's check it out. And as you can see, everything is locked right to the grid at the exact same bar for the most part. And that's kind of a problem, right? That wasn't the intent of the performance. I wanted the performance to be staggered. So in this case, let's loop my drum loop and let's get rid of this region. And before I record again, I'm gonna go back to the region inspector and change this quantize from classic to smart quantize. Now classic quantize, obviously hard locks everything to the grid, regardless of those notes were supposed to be staggered. But with Smart Quantize, Logic actually takes into consideration the relationship of the notes and chords in relation to each other. So let's check it out here. Okay, let's take a look. So now everything is not locked to the grid, right? But it's been maintained in relation to the grid. So if I turn this off, you can see everything's been moved around a little bit. Go back to an eighth note. Okay, and if we don't love certain chords, again, this smart quantize feature is based on the relationship of all the notes and chords together as a whole. So I can select this chord here and try adjusting it. So there's been a minor adjustment and we can play with it from there. And we can play around and see how the quantize feature changes the relationship of just the chords one by one. With all of these features, with the ability to tell Logic to quantize the performances as we're recording them, the ability to humanize performances as needed. Note repeat to quickly lay down a note that needs to be repeated over and over at specific intervals. And then smart quantize the ability to maintain the relationship of chords and notes in relation to each other. You have all the tools you need to really get down to creating music and not spending a lot of time digging through menus and fine tuning performances. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.